Hey everyone, I'm Jerry Saffron. This is Kitco Mining. And today we're focused on Radisson mining resources in their O'Brien Gold Project, the richest by grade in Quebec. Now this project has historically produced over 25 million ounces of gold in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, just that one little region. Now Radisson recently reported strong drill results and is advancing a 35,000 meter drilling program. Now let's hear for more from Matt Mance, and he's the new CEO of Radisson Mining Resources. Hey, Matt, welcome to Kitco, and it's great to see you. Thanks, Jeremy. Happy to be here. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. Obviously, Matt, it's a new role for you, but you've had a very long career in the mining industry, including leading major projects like Marathon Gold's Valentine Gold Project. Uh, talk to me a little bit here. What made you choose Radisson Mining Resources, and, and what are your top priorities now in this new role? Uh, you know, I spend the last five years or so working in the, in the Labrador developing the Valentine Project and with Marathon Gold, and we were acquired by Caliber Mining back in January. So I was approached uh, just after that by by the people at Radisson to to, to look at the O'Brien project in the Abitibi. And uh, um, and it's a compelling opportunity. Um, uh, you know, in my career, I've developed a speciality, I guess, for taking greenfield projects and, and taking them through the full journey of mine development, you know, resource growth, resource uh, presentation for financing and for development, team building, permitting, social accessibility, community involvement, financing, construction, and then into operations. So got halfway through the build at Valentine uh, and then did the business combination with Caliber, which I think has worked out very well so far for shareholders and more to come, I think. And and Radisson, what Radisson represents is, a, yeah, it, it's a quite a different beast. It's a, uh, it's a project that was mined during up until the 50s had the reputation for being the highest grade gold mine in Quebec, as you mentioned, and and with a very high grade resource right now. It's about a million ounces in all categories, double digit grade, so over 10 grams per ton of indicated resource. So lots of meat on the bones here to develop a, a good operation and a good business from. Yeah, interesting. Okay, uh, let's, let's break this open a little bit more here, Matt. When we talk a little bit about your 35,000 meter drilling program, I mean, some impressive drill results coming out of that. Tell us about the current program and what the plans are here. Yeah, well, this is class. What comes first, of course, is a geological understanding of the deposit. And I think the team at Radisson's done a very good job understanding that the geological controls and mineralization, where to go for more gold. So it's a very targeted drill program, 35,000 meters, as you said, just being expanded with a second rig. And about 60 or 70 percent of that drilling is focused on known areas of the deposit model where we think we're pretty confident there's going to be more ounces to to get that number growing that one million ounces higher uh, but there's also some deeper holes that are going on perhaps more speculative but but well-informed speculative holes that are, are that are going down below some high-grade shoots that the teams uh, identified um, and, and that will really kind of blow things open uh, lower down we think if those holes hit uh, because they're going to really sort of demonstrate the death potential of this this deposit and ultimately it's, it's about a million just over a million ounces right now uh on a very conservative uh, basis but the, the target here i think is to get it up to two or three million ounces eventually and i think the property has the scale and the geological parameters to achieve that yeah you know you're, you're going to release some of these results and matt how do the results stack up against what you were expecting and you know what's next to confirm the findings here well it's it's so it's a high grade narrow vein deposit so it's you know the drill results will characteristically be 10, 20, 30 grams per ton at, at their best over one, two, three, four, so five meter type intercepts. So I think the last the last drill result was about uh, I think nine, nine, ten grams over over five meters. So that that's quite characteristic, right? And out of that, using conservative parameters, you get a ten gram per ton indicated resource um, um, uh, with with you know narrow mining widths, but very high margin lucrative mining wins right and and so the potential here is a is a is an operation in the most prolific gold mining part of canada perhaps of the world the abitibi um you said 25 million ounces that's in, in that just that part of it the the, the busky cadillac camp multiple mines it's the same place where you can go and you can look left and look right and you'll see head frames both directions um so bringing that deposit forward in that environment with multiple companies around you, multiple mills around you, multiple permitted tailings facilities around you, um, and, and allowing the, the, the value of those high-grade ounces to, to come out. 
Yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, that operation is least of that asset, that region since 1901. It's been in production here. Talk to me a little bit about how important, I mean, all eyeballs are on Quebec. It's been a great region to do mining operations in. Talk to me about, you know, the operations inside of the Greenstone Belt here and, and how it's helping Radisson. Obviously, you have camps, logistics. Well, of course, I you mentioned my career before Marathon. I was a CEO of Stornoway Diamonds, and we, we built the Renard Mine and the James Bay of Quebec. That was the last mine. Uh, uh, I was going to say mine of any size. I think it was the last mine to be built in Quebec, uh, and that was in 2016. We brought it into production. So you know, I'm coming with a lot of familiarity with the jurisdiction and 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 the the, the the talent of the mining community within Quebec and the ability to. To build a mining business there that was in diamonds of course which is a completely different you know world than what we're talking about here which is gold in the abitibi the most bread and butter type mining in quebec that you can imagine um but yeah so it's it's you know routinely voted one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world and deservedly so it's it's the people it's the it's the it's the regulatory environment it's the the support of the of, of the of the government the support of institutional quebec for mining and certainly you know in terms of social acceptability for mining in the Abitibi, we're talking about Val d'Or, Rouen, Naranda. We're just in the town of Cadillac. These are this is a region that was has been based on mining in, in its entirety for the last hundred years or more, um, and uh, is very familiar with the benefits that mining mining brings. So all, all of that's to our advantage with with this project and this company. Yeah, talk to me a little bit. I mean, Radisson has currently a market cap of about fifty two million. Uh, six and a half million in cash as of May 2024. Well, wh- how does this support, you know, your plans going forward? I mean, there seems to be some good financial strength here. Well, I think the the, the cash treasury fully supports the the dual program that we've we've outlaid, so fully funded to do that. Um, uh, and you know, what investors are getting with a 50 million market cap a year is is, uh, you know, that that is the discovery cost. Um, this this is it's about fifty dollars per ounce on a pretty regular basis to, to add ounces here. So with a million ounces, it's a fifty million dollar discovery cost. So that's what investors are getting. But for very high quality ounces, very high margin ounces, in a in a location that's eminently you know developable as a as, as a mining project. So it's a great opportunity, I think, for investors to get in on that level. And I think my job coming to Radisson here and the opportunity and what, in, what excites me. Is the opportunity you now to to take that project to the next level, right? We're not going to rush out and build a mine tomorrow. We're not talking about that, but you know, realizing that the project perhaps has crossed the threshold where we can start contemplating mining. What do we have to do? Well, what are the next stages? What I've done in my career many times now, and it's metallurgy and it's permitting, and it's environmental baseline work, and it's and it's uh, and it's infill drilling and developing a mineable resource that can go to a mineral reserve. It's all of these things. And, uh, you know, look, looking, looking forward to that very much. Yeah, you know, it's, so, it's such an interesting time, especially for the miners. Uh, we have high, high prices of gold. You talked a little bit about your low cost. Talk to me about the share structure. I mean, you have $320 million outstanding. Uh, how do you keep shareholders happy and ensure financial stability in an environment where capital has been so hard and so expensive to come by? Well, first week in the job, so I'm getting to know the shareholders. Some, some of them I know already. In fact, Michael Gentili, who's on the board of of uh, of, of uh, Radisson, was a was a significant shareholder of Marathon Gold, and, that, and that's one of the it's one of the connections that brought me to Radisson. Frankly, um, uh, Radisson is blessed in its shareholder base by having a very large proportion of shareholding in the actual region of the project. Uh, in Rwanda and, and, and the, the communities around the project. And we're talking about sophisticated business people, people who are uh, of substantial means, uh, high net worth individuals who are in the mining industry uh, and have been supporters of this of this company and this project for a significant period of time. So that represents about 30 or 35% of the shareholding. And these are very uh, supportive and uh, 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 and you know, uh, you know sophisticated shareholders. But uh, in my career, I've, I've, I've very much um, uh, had a, uh, relationships with the institutional investment world. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think you're asking for trends in mining. I think very much the, the individual investor, the retail investor is becoming proportionally more important in this business uh, uh, compared to the traditional institutional investor that might be working at Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal or New York. Um, you know, the amount of uh, passively managed money 
in long only precious metals funds uh, with fund managers tasked with picking names that that is that's still there and and that's a world i've i've worked in for many years but it's becoming proportionally you know i think less important than than certainly the, the private equity money and, and also you know individual investors that, that want to see things done in the mining business so um i think bradison is starting off here well not starting off i'm sorry this company has got a long history and the share count reflects that it goes back to the uh, the early 2000s and before uh, but from where I'm starting off in terms of these relationships, I'm job number one is very much th these important shareholders in the in the region of the project, getting to know them, getting to understand their investment uh, objectives, and, and and going from there. Yeah, you know, Matt, you talked a little bit about this uh, all-in cost per drill. You know, it's really interesting. I mean, the cost efficiency of the company it's one hundred and fifty dollars all in. Per drilled meter, forty-eight dollars discovery cost at the high grade. You know, we're talking about this high grade, low cost exploration. It seems to really stand out. We've looked at some other junior stocks in this space. You know, some eyeballs going towards. Talk to me about the opportunity here. Uh, is it really investing kind of at this entry point now? Uh, talk to me about what makes Radisson a good investment. It seems like right now. Well, I think the investment opportunity is that this isn't just another also ran of a junior company in Quebec that's got, you know, you know, ounces in the ground. There's lots of projects with two, three, four million ounces of, of sub one gram type material and it's in a remote location. This is a million ounces of 10 gram, eight to 10 gram material in the ground, you know, 10, 15 minutes drive away from currently active mills and tailings facilities. You know, right beside the Highway 117, right beside the power line. So these are these are ounces that, that I'll, I'll say this with confidence because it's why I joined this company. These are ounces that are going to end up in somebody's mill, and whether that's a Radisson mill or somebody else's mill, it's going to happen. And with with something that high grade and something in that location and something with that growth opportunity in terms of the resource, uh, that you know that will happen. And in a twenty-three hundred dollar gold price environment, you know it'll happen in spades. So, um, you know, my job is to steer the project and the company towards that happening in good order, professionally. And the opportunity for investors is to understand that, and and come in at a valuation level, which is essentially the discovery cost of the answers in the ground right now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good time to position in here. Okay, talk to me about this balance, about expanding current resources and, of course, you know, exploring new targets. Uh, I know that you have the new Alger target area being explored. What milestones should we be watching for here? Yeah, that's an interesting thing that's popped up. And it's, a, it's you know, again, quick geology lesson. You've got the main break, the Lard Lake Cadillac break. And then just south of there, you've got what's called the Piché Group, which is a volcanic group where, where your classic veins are hosted. And that's the high grade stuff that we've been chasing. South of that, again, you've got this big sedimentary unit uh, called the Pontiac Sediment. And that has been a setting in other situations for lower grade but bulk tonnage mineralization. And, and just to the east of us, we've got Malartic, of course, which is a prime, prime example, lower grade bulk tonnage mining in the Abitibi. So, um, Proof of concept here a little bit, gold is beginning to show up in those sediments on our property. We're seeing it both in the drilling as we come in from the south through the Pontiac sediments towards the main break, looking for the high grade stuff. We're beginning to pick up you know, 20, 30, 40 meter intercepts of one gram material in, in the drilling. And, and, that, that, and that's probably always been there in this project, but just not recognized. And we're beginning to get our eye into that now. The team has got their eye into that. It's going back to old drill core to look for that. And then south again, on a larger property called New Amber, 75 square kilometers. That was till sampled last year just for this type of deposit. And again, that's now lit up. There's an area in the west side of the New Amber property, which is lit up with till sampling. And there's obviously a gold source there. So the focus of the company will remain the high grade narrow vein and uh, that narrow quartz veins in the PCA group that's delivering the resource and should be the heart of the future mine. But there is an interesting side thing going on here, which is this mineralization is showing up uh, in these in these sedimentary rocks. Um, and it's early days on that yet. I don't think we're going to blow our brains out quite yet 
testing that. I, I on the prize, which is the main deposit, but I think it's four or five drill holes in that 35,000 meter budget to test some of those targets and that have lit up with the, with the till sampling. And that, that'll be, it's a bit of a well card factor in the story. Yeah, in a fascinating region too, uh, taking a look at that asset. Okay, I know we don't have a crystal ball here and you're just basically moving into the office, Matt, but you know, looking ahead, what are the key milestones for Radisson Mining in the next, say 12 months? And talk to me about how these fit into your long-term goals here. Yeah, I think, I think um, again, exploration disclosure is going to be pretty pretty continuous. There's going to be a regular stream of drill results coming out from that 35,000 meter program. There's already been a couple of drops of drill results this year. and So that'll continue through the rest of the year and into the beginning of next year. But I think you're also going to see us beginning to talk about some of these, some of these more kind of next level up type activities. Metallurgy is really important. There's a metal, metallurgical study going on right now. There has been quite a lot done in the past. There's more going on right now. We want to get talking about that. Um, uh, obviously, if this ore is to go to a mill, ours or somebody else's, understanding the metallurgy and flow sheet considerations is key to establishing that. Uh, and then I think you're also going to see us talking about um, talking about, uh, about the permitting timelines uh, and talking about uh, uh, some, some, you know, a little bit more strategic type disclosure on on conceptually how we see this project going. I, mean, I, I think. This is still, still an exploration company. There's no engineering study for this project yet. There's no statement of economic value out there. There's no PEA or pre-feasibility or anything. And we're still very much focused on getting that million ounces into, into a bigger number. I think it's crossed the threshold where we can start contemplating what a mine might look like, but I think there's more to come. So still an exploration company for, for, for the in the short term, still drilling, still adding ounces. But now I think beginning to think about the professional things that make it real, make it mineable take it to that next level. Right. Matt Monson, congratulations on the new role. He's the new CEO of Radisson Mining Resources, of course, joining us today to break it all down. Radisson Trades on the TSX Venture. Hey, great seeing you, Matt. I'm looking forward to coming on and, and hopefully having you on soon for a little update here. Thanks, Jeremy. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for your time. I'm Jeremy Saffron for all of us here at Kitco Mining. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button for the latest content, and we'll see you next time.